Hi, my name is Gabriel, and I'm supervised by Dr. Malar Shakavarti at McGill University. And in this presentation, I will tell you about how we've developed an algorithm called neural prior recovery to separate the neural contributions to the fMRI signal. I have no disclosures. So in the world of fMRI, it is notoriously difficult to account for all the potential set of confounds that can impact connectivity analysis. In this review by Strick and colleague, they argue that there's three essential type of corrections that must be applied to account for the variety of confounds. The first ones which are going to account for local inflations in signal and techniques such as IC can mitigate those. And also there's global signal fluctuations where the global signal must be regressed. And finally, certain frames must be censored when there's widespread disruption of the signal since these frames cannot be effectively recovered. Now, however, even nowadays, it's not clear whether there's one set of strategies that can perfectly correct for all the potential confounds while preserving the neural signal. And this is a particular issue in the case of global signal regression. Since the global signal has been related to neural signal, it, it might be removing some signal of interest. And what I'm going to propose in this presentation with my work is that we can attempt approaching this, pro this problem from a different angle where we might instead try to separate predefined neural sources from all other sources. And that I'm going to argue that this can greatly simplify the problem. And I'm referring to this framework as neural prior recovery or NPR. And in this slide, I'm going to summarize the rationale for how it can mitigate removing neural signal of interest. So within this framework, we're defining a priori, a set of neural sources or priors that we are interested in analyzing. And these can correspond to ICA components of brain networks, such as those one I'm showing here, obtained with mass fMRI. And within NPR, we're going to define all the potential scan-specific confound sources that are not uh, already accounted for by these priors. And by defining the confounds to differ from these priors, we are ensuring that we're removing signal that is not uh, the neural sources of interest. And uh, after accounting for the confounds within the residuals, in principle, what there should be remaining to fit are the networks of interest. So we can recover a scan-specific version of these networks for downstream, downstream analyses. I'm going to detail in this presentation how we carry out this process. And in particular, towards the end of my presentation, I'm leveraging mouse fMRI simultaneously with cortex-wired calcium activity to really establish how well these strategies can preserve neural signal. But first, I'm going to discuss about dual regression, which is a pre-existing technique, which is already following this NPR framework in a certain, to some extent, because it is beginning with a set of group IC components that offer some priors that we want to recover in individual scan. And these group IC components are going to be a mixture of neural network and confound sources, thus accounting for these potential confound components defined at the group level. And dual regression works first by regressing these components in a scan to obtain associated time courses, and then next, regressing those time courses to obtain their spatial counterparts, where each spatial map are going to represent a scan-specific version from each of these prior, thus successfully recovering predefined neural sources in individual scans. However, this technique was not necessarily designed with regards to state-of-the-art recommendations for confound correction. In particular, it is not defining the confound sources in a scan-specific manner, which uh, is known to be an issue if we want to account for scan variability in the type of confound components that are manifested. And secondly, it is not correcting accurately for global signal fluctuation since it, is, since it is not computing some kind of temporal regression. In the next few slides, I'll describe how we develop a NPR algorithm that can account for these limitations. And this framework first build on an important concept, which is that by iterating dual regression, while providing the component output from one iteration as the input for the next iteration. In fact, iterating this process will converge on a set of components that maximize variance explained in the scan time series. And this is in fact equivalent to principal component analysis or PCA, which is effective at finding the variety of sources present in a given scan. Now this particular formulation of PCA is important because it can easily be modified to introduce a prior 
at the beginning of it, each iteration, such that this prior is already accounted for in the regression, thus enforcing the other components that are getting fitted over time to differ from this prior. And I call this approach complementary PCA, which is the building block for really conducting the neural prior recovery algorithm, which I'm gonna detail here in this slide, where in a first CPCA step, we provide the set of prior components of interest uh, that would represent neural networks, say. And in the first CPCA step, it will find all the set of potential confound components which differ from these prior. Thus, finding scan-specific confound components while preventing removal of neural activity. And in a second CPCA step, we can then invert this process by providing the confound components as prior, such that all there is remaining to fit will be the neural network originally accounted for. But now here we can recover a scan-specific version of this network. And by doing so, we can account for this first limitation where now we are actually defining scan-specific version of the potential sources of confounds. And here I'm showing how this process can indeed converge on a stable solution that recovers the prior. On the left, I'm showing the outputs for different iterations of NPR while increasing the number of non-prior components. And you can see that after accounting for four other sources, we're effectively recovering the network of interest as the predominant remaining sources within the residuals. And on the right, I'm showing exactly the same thing on the y-axis here, where instead I'm showing the correlation between the output and the prior component, and eventually it reaches some plateau, showing that there's a successful recovery of this prior with sufficient correlation. And this is a first criterion we're using for automatizing the convergence for selecting the number of components. And a second criterion here is the difference between the current output and the previous one. And when this difference is below a certain threshold for sufficient iteration, number of iterations, we can assess that there is convergence. And so with these two criteria, we can automatically estimate the number of, co of components and in principle, automatize confound correction. And now what I'm showing here is that this process can be easily modified to also include multiple priors at the same time simultaneously. So this technique is not necessarily limited to one neural network at a time, but can really account for the complex uh, simultaneous activity of multiple networks like, is, like it is usually done with IC decomposition. Now to address the second limitation that I mentioned, which is the impact of global signal fluctuations there's an extra innovation that was necessary. I'm showing on the left the carpet plot in the scan showing global signal artifact clearly visualized here. At the bottom here, I'm showing the time courses for a variety of confound components derived through dual regression, thus showing fluctuations for a variety of different potential confounds. And at the bottom here, I'm showing the network time course derived for the somatomotor network in mice with three different analyses approach. First, seed connectivity, then dual regression, and finally NPR, but while only modeling spatial components. And you can see that all three analyses are clearly correlated with the global signal. And the extra innovation that was key in mitigating this effect was to have an extra CPCA step where instead we're fitting temporal PCA components before the prior recovery. And that was effective at really mitigating this correlation, which is close to zero now. Now to formally test this uh, particular algorithm against other connectivity analyses, uh, we leverage a multi-site MOS fMRI data set presenting a variety of uh, data quality between the data sets, some of which had important confounds. And what I'm showing here, first at the top, is the distribution of the correlation with the prior that's obtained across all the different scans for the three different connectivity analyses investigated. And you can see that NPR and dual regression tends to better recover the prior or the canon map of the canonical network than seed connectivity. While at the bottom, I'm showing the temporal correlation with confounds by correlating here, as shown in the previous slide, the network time course with the different potential confound components. And you can see that NPR is the best at is better than dual regression at lowering this correlation, thus offering the best trade-off between network detect detectability and confound correction. Now, an additional observation here is that by applying an extra global signal regression, 
there seems to be minimal um, reduction of confined correlation in this case, while reducing uh, significantly the network detectability in dual regression, showing how global signal regression can potentially impact network detectability. But finally, the last observation I want to emphasize here, and where the potential of NPR truly shine, is when no extra confound correction is applied, where you can see that the confound correlation is at the lowest compared to all these different iterations I'm showing here, really demonstrating how there's no need for extra corrections with this approach, and that it can effectively account for the variety of potential confounds. Now, in a last set of analyses, I've been lucky to carry out a collaboration with Evelyn Lake, who has access to a data set with simultaneous cortex-wide calcium recording of neural activity and fMRI recording, so that we can more directly assess how different network analyses are effective at recovering a neural signal. And this is what I carried out here, where I first derive a ICA component corresponding to the same network in the two modalities, before deriving network time courses with the different analyses, convolving with an HRF function, the calcium time course, and that's cross-correlating the two modalities. I'm showing the result on the right here, where you can see that NPR, again, performs the best by maximizing this relationship to neural activity. Although it is only marginally better than dual regression, but overall, what I want to emphasize is how it can automatize confound correction while maximally preserving neural signal of interest. So in summary, I believe that with this framework, I've provided arguments for how this can improve the reliability. Uh, this can be a reliable framework for confound correction, as well as preserving the specificity to neural signal of interest. And I believe it can be also a generalizable approach, given that the only manual potential uh, decision step is selecting the number of number of non-prior components, which can be easily automatized with the two criteria I've shown and how we've demonstrated that this can work across a variety of potential data sets and modalities. Now, the main limitation that you might have been considering to go out is that, of course, we are constraining our analyses to a set of predefined priors of interest and discarding the rest of the data. And of course, for certain exploratory analyses, this is not appropriate. But I would argue that a, a vast subset of the literature looking at network connectivity would benefit from such an approach. Because in most cases, we don't have a way to validate the neural basis of the signal. And so we are essentially relying on canonical network for interpretability. And the rest of the residuals not accounted for by these networks are essentially unknown. So I believe that with this NPR approach, where we define a priori the networks that we're going to study, this actually offers a robust hypothesis testing framework that may improve reproducibility in the literature. So with that, I'll thank you for your attention. And I will thank, in particular, my supervisor, collaborators, as well as my laboratory and funding sources.